Mark, welcome to Robins TV. Have you come up for air from the transfer window? Only just. Uh, yeah, it's been a long summer. It's been a busy summer, um, but I think we're in we're in decent shape. How do you reflect on it looking back, given the kind of earlier deadline? Was it frantic? Was it kind of a, a crazy time for you? I think it's probably been one of the busiest summers uh, that I've been involved with, that's for sure. Uh, you mentioned the, the transfer window closing early there. Um, we were one of the clubs who supported that and drove that and pushed that with the Football League. Um, simply because we thought that you know it, we have our house in order and we do things correctly. Um, and we, we wanted to see everyone, you know, work off a more level playing field. So we pushed for the window to be closed early. Um, we knew when the deadline was, we worked to that. Uh, and we did quite a few deals in that period. There's a lot of names flying around, a lot of speculation, and there's a lot of information. How do you kind of process that, and kind of what do you do to sift the names that are thrown at you? Uh, it's a challenge, but keeping on top of it is absolutely key. Um, I think if you, you speak to any of, of my, my team that are close to me, they'll tell you that we run a data dashboard in my office that's kept live 24 hours a day, which has all the clubs, all their business, what we believe they're looking to try and do. So we understand the markets that we, we might sell into and we understand the markets that we may buy from. Um, and that helps because the, the devil is in the detail. And as you've just said, there's a lot of names, a lot of data being thrown around and we need to be, to be on, on top of it. Um, with regards to some of the names that are thrown around, it's frustrating. Are they all times. true? Or? <laughs> Good question. You push it hard. No, it's not. It, it's not. Um, it's frustrating at times because whether it's in local, regional, or national media, you see names bandied around and linked to the football club, and sometimes they're cl they're close and they're online with what we're trying to do, and other times they're just way off the mark. And the frustration thing is, you you want to come out and talk to the fans. You want to tell the fans what you're trying to do, who you're looking at, and the deals that you're trying to do. But if you do that, you're going to lose the commercial advantage and we'll lose players to clubs, we'll pay more and it'll become more difficult. And that's why at times when I want to speak to the supporters and I want to explain why we're trying, what we're trying to do, that we actually take the decision to stay quiet and get on with, get on with our business. But it, it's frustrating, but it, it's the nature of the business. Um, a lot of names mentioned um, and I, I go back to it, but a lot of business done. During one week, I think it was the final week, where it seemed to be signing players, one from every country before Brexit, <laughs> gone to people places like Hungary, Portugal yeah. uh, and France. Talk us about that. Is that a change of policy or is that just kind of a, a shift from what we have been doing? I wouldn't say it's a change of policy. I'd say it's probably an expansion of, of what we, we, we're trying to do. Um, you know, myself and Lee talk consistently about developing, evolving, progressing and moving forward. Uh, and both of us, both on and off the pitch, are adamant the club has to move forward. If we don't move forward and move forward at pace, I've said this before, we'll move backwards and other clubs will move ahead of us. And I think the signings of Masingo, um, Nagy, uh, Pereira on loan at the moment, um, are the type of player that take us to, a, to another level. You know, Lee is certainly not afraid to, to be brave. Um, not only in the players that he signs, but in the players that he's let go at times. But it, be under no illusion, it's all done with, with one aim in mind, and that's to move us forward, and to move us forward as quickly as we can. Um, so, yeah, international players, I think they were well recruited. They've settled really well. Frustrated with Nagy's injury, if, if we're honest. Um, but I hope the fans are enjoying, uh, if you like, a new breed in, in the likes of uh, Masingo. Are we heard about Masengo and his song on Bristol Sport TV earlier. Um, what about players we know about, so like Jada Silva, Thomas Carlos, Casey Palmer, that, that Chelsea relationship, how's that developing? Yeah, I think, you know, the proof is in the pudding. It's a relationship that we've built um, from back in the days when we took Tammy on loan. Uh, we didn't have a relationship with Chelsea at that point. And I think it's been built on trust and, and mutual respect. Uh, and so is the relationships we have with other clubs at the top level, the likes of Manchester United, etc. You know, we, we communicate, we meet with them, we see them regularly to share information. Um, but the Chelsea one is one that's come to fruition. You know, we had all three players uh, on loan. Uh, we had the option on De Silva, which we, we exercised. And because of the relationship we had with both the players and the club, it allowed us to construct deals that worked for, for both clubs and for all of the players. 
So delighted to get those three in uh, of the caliber that they're at. And again, I think it shows an example of where we're trying to get to. We're trying to move forward. We're trying to recruit and bring in better talent consistently. When you construct those deals and players go out, and you know we've had Lloyd Kelly, and Adam Webster, and others go. Um, What's the process? Because people talk about the big numbers. People talk, you know, why well, didn't go last week? And you know, club bid so many million for just, you know, without obviously we won't go into detail about the, the financials. But who makes the decision? Is it Steve Lansdowne? Is it John Lansdowne, the new chairman? Is it is it Lee? Is it yourself? Who makes the final call? I think there are probably uh, a number of questions within that question. So let me let me work backwards. Take I think when we when we sell players it's always a difficult decision because you have to balance um, the quality of the player within the squad and the detriment to the squad if that player moves on versus the quantum of money that you get for that player and again I go back to at times it is the right time to evolve and move move forward so yes we've, we've had di difficult sales no more so than Marlon Pack uh, our captain been here for a, for quite a while seen success with the club um, but we felt that the level of deal that we got to with Marlon at the point of the, his career that he was at gave us an option to let Marlon go on to new pastures and us to move forward. You've then got, we've had two big financial sales, um, very different, Lloyd Kelly, who's come through our, our, our academy. Um, and a lot of people within the academy should take great, great thanks and joy in the development of, of Lloyd Kelly, not only as a player, but as a human being because he, he's absolutely top draw both on and off the pitch. And that's almost in a difficult emotional sale because of that attachment. Yeah. And if I'm honest with you, I think the Lloyd sale probably came a little bit earlier than I would have thought. I thought if it came in this window, it would come towards the end of this window. And if it didn't come in this window, it would certainly come in the January or the, or the following summer. Uh, I'm not sure the quantum of the deal would have been much different, but the club that he went to could well have been. Uh, and I have to say, I thought Bournemouth were fantastic in their negotiation. They got themselves ahead of the curve, ahead of clubs that probably would have come in later um, because I think they saw the type of player that they, they, they could take in. Um, and again, when the quantum of the deal is right and the finances are right, we execute. Adam Webster, similar. Um, but how do, we, how do we come to that decision? Well. It's never a shock or a surprise, first of all, because both myself and Lee talk three, four, five times a day if necessary. We talk to John every day, John's in the business, and we talk to Steve consistently when we need to, more so in a transfer window, as, as, as you would expect. So we, we normally get to a point where myself and Lee look at each other and we have a discussion, and if we've got an offer coming for a player that we think is of the right level, uh, and our recruitment is in a position that we, we think it's the right thing to do because we can bring the next one in. We'll then recommend to both Steve, John and the board that actually th we think this is a deal we should take. Uh, uh, and if Steve uh, and John agree that, then you know, the devil is in the detail for me to finalise and get the best agreement that we can. But it's very much a team effort. Very, very much a team effort. Is it... A a jigsaw or some fans might go well we're getting so much for Webster therefore we've got so much for a striker and kind of it was quite late when we brought Benny in um, can you talk about the, the Nketiah deal in, in terms of how close we were and why the Benny deal was so late in the day people want, perhaps want to know that yeah I, I, and, I, and I'm pleased you asked me that because um, yeah, look, let's be clear. We, we tried to sign in Ketia. Um, we met Arsenal. We presented to Arsenal, both Lee and myself. Um, but there were a large number of clubs in for what is a very talented player. Um, and we got down to the last two. And we thought we got a very, very good chance of getting him. Player makes the decision um, to go to Leeds. And, and again, we, we, we respect that. But we don't suddenly at that point think oh, we're in trouble, we then got to find someone else because we don't operate like it's that. Not a li it's not a list where you go, right, we can't get him, therefore... Or it's about options, okay. okay? I wouldn't be, and Lee wouldn't be so unprofessional as to have one option, put all our eggs in one basket. We just don't work like that. You know, we have got a number of irons in the fire at any point in time on different positions and we're working through deals. 
So ben and Benick is, is a prime example of that. Benick is someone who we tracked, watched, scouted, had the data on, had the reports back on for a long period of time. But for that deal to happen, the player has to want to come to Bristol City and Stoke City have to want to let him go. So we have to be ready should that opportunity come. And we felt that uh, that that may come, that opportunity may come, and we were ready for it when it happened. There were others out there that we were looking at. There were a number of nines that we were looking at. And yes, as the window draws to a close, some of the players that you look at become less available and others become more available. But the key to it is to be ahead of the curve. The key to it is to know the industry, know the players and be in front of it so we have options and we are ready to move as and when necessary. What about the players we put out on loan? So I think there's 23 players out on loan at the moment. Um, is, is that fundamental to Bristol City's future? Are, you, are we kind of just grooming them to, to sell them on? Explain a bit of how that works. So like Joe Morrell, so for instance, you know, people won't say, well, why have you not given Joe Morrell a chance in the first team? Um, can, can you just elaborate on, on those kind of sort of loans? Yeah, the, I think the loan programme, particularly for the younger boys, has worked very well for us. But it's part of, and only part of our player recruitment and development plan. Um, you know, we've got over 20 players out on loan. I think 13 in the league, and that's grown each year. And it's almost an industry within an industry, but it's only part of our recruitment. And you can look at players like Zach Viner, who's out on loan. He, came, he was out on loan last season, came back, had pre-season with, with us, travelled to the US with us. And we felt he needed some more game time out on loan. Taylor Moore had done exactly the same process, but we felt Taylor, for whatever reason, the manager's decision, the well, coach's decision, was, was ready, to, ready to step in. And he's done extremely well. And, you know, you can look at Tariq, who's been out on loan. He's now come back in. Antoine, who was at Newport for half a season, came back in. We decided to keep him with us. And now he's very close to the first team. So, you know, and Joe Morelli's part of that group. And it's about timing, experience. And there is no one better than Lee, than Lee Johnson, trust me, to make that call on when to bring them back, when to play them, when to get them more experience. Brian Tinian plays a key role in that. So do a group of other people because it is an industry within the football club. You know, 13 players on league loan. We have to monitor what they're doing in training with the other clubs. We make sure their games are covered. We make sure they're living correctly. Some of them come back and train with us at specific times. We monitor them consistently because no, although they're on loan with another football club, they're Bristol City's players. So we have to take care and of that them. that monitoring includes analysis and I think there's a new Absolutely. loans physio. Yeah, there's part of that is our medical reporting. Yep. So we have a new uh, a loans physio who works for the football club and their responsibility is specifically those players out on loan to make sure that they are being developed in line with Andy Rolls's um, uh, sports specific requirements and Lee Johnson's requirements whilst they're out on loan. So again, it is, it's a big part of what we do, but it is only part of what we do. From a recruitment and development basis. And a couple of those players are, I think, Forrest Green and Jojo Wallacott's playing well. And James Morton, I think you've got an update for us. Yeah, both doing well. Um, James Morton played against us in pre season. Uh, he will now shortly sign a new four year contract with the football That's club. Good, yeah. Another young player who's gone out on loan, uh, oh. developed. We have big hopes for him. And again, I'm sure he'll be an asset to, to us back here at the gate when his time is right. So, Mark, thanks for that good insight into. You know what goes into the transfer window and loans and everything like that. What are your hopes for the season? What are your kind of sort of ambitions and, and realistically where where do we want to end up? Look, every season I've been here, I've been here back here four years now, and every season I've said at the start of the season it's about progression. And people get bored with me saying that, and I know that, but it is true. If we keep progressing at the rate we are progressing, at some point this club will end up being promoted. Our ultimate goal is promotion, full stop. That's what we're trying to do. I'd be lying to you if I said anything other than both myself, Lee Johnson and our staff are obsessed with getting this club promoted. That's what we are ultimately trying to do. But progression and getting to that point takes time and everyone is ultimately working to that point. Mark, thanks so much for joining us. It's a pleasure.